The Mystery of a Girl 15 November 1915 The night was windy, dark and moonless. David Walter was driving on a remote country road. He stared through his windscreen at the scene lit up brightly by the headlights of his car. He could not believe what he saw. A girl in torn clothes and bleeding lay face down by the grass verge. Walter, an agricultural engineer in his fifties, jammed on his brakes and brought his car to a shuddering stop. It was just before 7 p.m. on that windy November night, and he was returning home after finishing his work in the countryside. What he saw in front of him was horrifying. Was it an accident? Or was it an unusually brutal murder? He was trembling as he opened his car door. He ran quickly along the deserted road to where the girl lay. He reached the spot and stopped, bewildered. There was nothing there. He returned to his car and moved it so that its headlight illuminated the spot where the girl had lain. There was nothing to be seen, not even a mark of blood, although Walter could swear he had seen blood dripping down the girl's arms onto the road. With a torch, he thoroughly searched all around the place, but there was nothing anywhere. Finally, badly shaken and puzzled, he returned to his car and drove thoughtfully home. Walter could never forget this incident. Was it purely a figment of his imagination? The more he thought about it, the more he was convinced it was not mere imagination. At last, he contacted a local priest who was said to be an authority on the supernatural. To his surprise, the local priest did not appear astonished when told about the bleeding girl. He knew all about it already. The priest said that in the previous two years, at least four motorists had reported the same thing. Each had seen a half-naked girl lying by the roadside at exactly the same spot. Once the matter had been reported to the police also. They had searched for the body, but nothing was found. However, the four motorists had no doubts about what they had seen. And this is what even Smith, a hotelier, had told the local priest. I saw the girl in the twilight of a September evening in 1949. Her clothes were torn and she was lying in the grass by the road. There was blood on her back and her arms. I thought she had been murdered. I stopped the car and jumped out. But as I approached the body, it just seemed to fade away. I wondered if I should report to the police. But then there was really nothing to report. They would think I was mad or drunk or just having them on. The local priest had heard a similar story from a salesman who said he had seen the phantom body in the headlights of his car. Instead of stopping, he drove frantically to the nearest house and phoned the police. When they arrived, they found nothing and the motorist got a severe ticking off. After hearing all these stories from the local priest, David Walter went away quite confused. But now the local priest decided to find out the real facts. He rechecked the stories he had heard from all the drivers and found that the stories were all very identical. None of the motorists knew each other and their reports covered a period of over two years. Their descriptions of the girl, the way she was lying and her position on the verge of the road were always the same. The priest came to the firm conclusion that it could not be a mere coincidence, so he decided to make further inquiries. He consulted a local historian, Dr. Arthur, who gave the priest a very astonishing information. The historical records with him mentioned that exactly 300 years earlier, a girl had been robbed, stabbed and left to die at that very spot. Later, two men were hanged for the crime. But the mystery of the bleeding girl who just faded away was still not solved. Early in 1951, the local priest arranged a prayer at that very spot for the peace of the girl's soul. 
and happily the phantom of the bleeding girl had not been seen again.